Many fly anglers don't carry spare spools of fly line, and this does seem to limit the water types and methods we can fish. But with a little imagination reapplication, we can find different things to do with the gear we have. It would be nice to have a spare spool with a sink tip or sinking line, but there is a way to fish streamers on floating lines, and there is always water to prospect streamers and have a reasonable chance to catching trout. Let's have a look. So we've come out today and we anticipated caddis, PMDs and stoneflies, hopefully a couple fish rising in the subtle seams in the, the higher water. That hasn't happened. We tried droppers, they didn't want that. So we thought, well, let's do a little deeper nymphing and that hasn't produced. So now what? We're out here and we're trying to get some fish, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and just use a, a 10 foot leader to 2x and we're gonna tie on a couple of streamers and we're gonna target water kind of waist thigh deep or shallower and we're just gonna do the same uh, streamer fishing but we're gonna focus specifically on water along the edges of the shoreline of the river or the edges of islands and rocks and that kind of stuff and just focus on the water that we can reach without going too deep and we're just going to try to find those active fish that are on the little pieces of structure that don't have a lot of depth that we can work well. So the first structure type that we're going to focus on is just a long shelving riffle uh, with a bit of an island in the middle and we're just we're going to actually ignore the lower and deeper bits and we're just going to work our way along the shelf and the riffle and just try to focus on the rainbows and browns that are still feeding and still nymphing but we're not going to be, we know that we can't reach them in heavier flows and deeper water. So we're just going to work on everything from about eight inches deep all the way down to waist deep. We're out here with our nine foot five weight rod. We've got a weight forward fly line with a 10 foot leader to two X. I have a tiny little split shot on there. Not a, not too big and not actually too small. It's just big enough that it's going to get that fly subsurface quickly. I've got 2x tippet and I also have 18 to 24 inches of 2x tippet to the trailing fly. Now because we're focused on faster water, we're going to have to get the fish's attention quickly and that's why I have a little bit of flash in both flies just to get their attention as the flies go ripping past. Because we're focused on the first 2 to 25 feet along the shallow feature, we aren't looking for distance. We need accuracy right up the seam or drop off zone. The cast is simply a lift with a roll forward to a stop, then one back cast and shoot forward. With a good stop, there is naturally enough energy to load the rod and line with two small, lightly weighted streamers and the water they've absorbed. It's a relaxed motion. Energy is needed to ensure you have line control. You need to cast arrow straight line to ensure connection to your fly in case a strike occurs as soon as the flies hit the water and also because you need to strip moderate to fast speeds right away. Every inch of this water is possible trout water, and the sooner you induce action to your flies, the more chance you have at a strike. Each finger of a shelf is a miniature creek plume unto itself, and each one could hold several trout nosed into the current and depth change. Each finger needs to be worked independently. Don't try to cross several and just rip your flies down the seams of all increase your chances of catching multiple fish. Cast into or along the edges of each seam of each finger and make two or three casts from the lower, mid, then the head of each before taking steps forward to repeat that process at the next finger seam. To effectively fish this water, do short casts and drifts, keeping a straight line and simply pulsing the rod tip to add action to the streamers. Because you aren't pulling line in, you can do slow pulses while allowing the flies to drift to deeper water where you can then strip your line in. As you walk up this zone, it's a game of working out, working in, popping and pulsing your rod tip, and adjusting stripping speed to slower at depth. Even if you don't catch anything all the way up, be sure to work the inside to the very top seam of the main current. All it takes is one good rainbow to have decided to station to feed on nymphs at the edge of a heavy cover and you could catch the rainbow of a lifetime. Work to the extreme top, always. When you arrive at the head of the run, add an extra split shot and start working back down. Cast slightly upstream to the main depth transition, often noted by a tea to green color zone. The cast remains short, but now you're simply flipping your flies to the shallow edge of the main current. 
Allow the flies to swing downstream and at the end of the swing, leave your rod tip out along the seam and pulse and twitch your fly to entice any trout holding slightly deeper than what you had fished on the way up. Take a few steps downstream and repeat as you work your way back down the run to where you began. Some days trout won't be up on the shallow step of the shelf of the ripple, or maybe a weather or water change has them dour, and the dangle of a swung fly held above them will be enough to entice a take. I started working my way downstream, casting across and just hanging and just letting it, bringing my rod tip up, straight line downstream, just kind of pulsing it down the drop off zone. And he just wanted to hang right in front of it, boom. And that was the only one, now all the way up and all the way down.